स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे घोरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवाणी पश्चात्यदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्री वासदे गौर भक्त बृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे अर्चना कैन यू मूव द स्लाइड नेक्स्ट स्लाइड नेक्स्ट स्लाइड गो हेड ओके गीत महात्म्य ये शृण्वी पतंती गीत शस्त्र महारिशम नाथिवाय मन साया देव न संशाया वन हु डे एंड नाइट हियर्स एंड रिसाइट स गीता इज नेवर टू बी टेकन एज अ मेयर ह्यूमन बीइंग विदाउट अ डाउट ही इज अ वेरिटेबल गॉड สำหรับบุคคลที่ได้ที่ฟังพระพุทธคิตาแล้วท่องพระพุทธคิตาเป็นประจำทั้งวันทั้งคืนบุคคลนั้นเนี่ยจะไม่ถือว่าเป็นม
Envy is the quality of materialistic people. In material world, people are envious of each other. Someone has got more money than someone else. We envy them. Someone is more successful in their in their work. We envy them. And someone maybe got a better brain or better looking than somebody else. We envy them. In the material world, we're all envious of Krishna. Krishna is Bhagavan. He has everything. He is the best looking. He is the most the most knowledgeable. He is the strongest. But Arjuna is not envious of Krishna, so Krishna appreciates that quality. And Krishna is going to give Arjuna this most confidential knowledge. And by this knowledge, we can get free. We one can, if we have this knowledge, we can be freed from the miseries of material world. So we may question, well, if it can free people from the miseries of the material world, why don't we make it more easily available? Why does it have to be confidential? It's confidential because if we give it to unqualified people, they will not use it correctly. So it's kept for the, the devotees, not for everyone, but it's for devotees. Go ahead, number two, nine two. Yeah, a famous verse. Raja Vidya Raja Guyam Pavitram Idam Uttamam Prakyak Shavagamam Dharmyam Susukam Kartam Avyaya. This knowledge is the king of education, the most secret of all secrets. It is the purest knowledge, and because it gives direct perception of the self by realization, it is perfection of religion. It is everlasting and it is joyfully performed. So this knowledge is described as Raja Vidya, the king of knowledge, or we could also say this is the knowledge of kings. It's the king of knowledge because Bhakti is, is the king of, Bhakti is the best of all knowledge. And this knowledge given in this chapter is the best of all bhakti, it's the highest bhakti. Bhakti 
ใหญ่ที่สุดแล้วนะคะเพราะฉะนั้นเป็นความรู้ที่สอนเกี่ยวกับบอกตี้ความรู้นี้ก็เลยกลายเป็นเหมือนกับเป็นคิงของความรู้ And it's described Raja Guyam is the most secret of all secrets. Bhakti itself is confidential, but this knowledge given in this chapter, this is Kevala Bhakti, or this is very pure Bhakti, and it is very confidential. <laughs> It's confidential because people don't understand it. They cannot appreciate it. Just like a king may have a lot of wealth, he may have many jewels and beautiful gems, and they may be very valuable. But if you show them to the child, the child cannot understand the value of these jewels. So the same way, people who have no knowledge of yoga and self-realization. Cannot understand this knowledge. But by this knowledge, this knowledge can destroy all kinds of sinful reactions which are there in our body. The reactions, sinful reactions are there in our body and they can all be removed by the power of this knowledge. The, the sinful reactions are caused by ignorance. And ignorance is removed by knowledge. And the special nature of this knowledge is susukam. That is very joyfully performed. The nature of the soul is to be joyful, to be very happy, because the soul's nature is such an ananda. So, when we engage in devotional service, our spiritual nature should awaken, and we should become joyful. And this knowledge is everlasting. This is spiritual process. It means you can go on doing these activities again and again, and we will feel all the every time ecstasy. We will feel great pleasure in engaging in the process of bhakti. All right, go ahead. All right, so. Abhajananti mammudha manushintana mashritam parambhava majanato mamabuddha maheshwaram. This is text number 11 of the ninth chapter. Fools deride me when I descend in the human form. They do not know my transcendental nature is the supreme lord of all that be. Salute, 
ในฐานะที่เป็นองค์อภิวิญญาณองค์พระควานของสรรพสิ่ง So why doesn't you know when when we hear the devotional service is so wonderful we may we may wonder why don't more people take it up It's ever it's so joyful per, is to engage in the devotional service is very joyful and it destroys ignorance and ends all the misery of life. So why don't more? Why doesn't everybody engage in bhakti? Why don't they all do it? They can all be happy. But people, or many people, they cannot understand the form of Krishna. They think he's just a human being. He's just an ordinary person. Sometimes people think, oh, Krishna is just some person in, in history. He was just a, you know, like great man in history. So he was a great man in history. And we think, oh, yeah, he had a lot of opulence or a lot of strength. That was his karma. So they're thinking Krishna just to be an ordinary person, just to be a human being. And they think he cannot be God. Look, he looks just like us. And so when people see the form of Lord Brahma or Lord Krishna, it's bewildering for them. And even great demigods become bewildered when they see Lord Krishna performing his pastimes. Lord Brahma, Lord Brahma saw Krishna in the fields with all the other cowherd boys, and Lord Krishna sitting there in the fields eating rice and yogurt with all the cowherd boys. So Lord Brahma is thinking, how can he be my master? How could he be greater than me? And Brahma is thinking, I've got four heads. He's only got one. I'm greater than him. So like this, like this, even demigods like Lord Brahma and Indra and Lord Shiva, they all become bewildered sometimes by the power of Krishna. And sometimes people think, there's some people, they think Krishna, well, he's a form of the Brahman. Ultimately, it's a Brahman which is supreme. And Krishna and Rama, when they come, they're just forms of the Brahman. So they don't understand the transcendental nature of Lord Krishna. Even though Krishna performs so many wonderful pastimes, they could not understand. When he was a small baby, he sucked the breast of Putana and she revealed herself to be a big Rakshasi. 
ตอนพร้องยังเด็กเนี่ยก็ได้แสดงลีลาในการดูดนมปูตนาพร้อมกับดูดปรามชีวิตของนางไปด้วยและสุดท้ายนางก็เผยร่างกายที่แท้จริงที่เป็นมารของนางออกมา And he dealt with Sishupal. Sishupal was very envious of Lord Krishna, and he became very insulting to Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna had to kill him. And Krishna also killed other demons, like especially Kamsa, who was always. Thinking of trying to kill Krishna. So, so it's the nature of these foolish people that they think Krishna is a per an ordinary person, and he takes birth and he dies, and they want to kill him. But they don't understand Krishna's transcendental nature. His birth is not like our birth, and his when he leaves this world, it's not like the way we leave the world. So these people who don't understand Krishna and who think he's a human, they're described here. They're fools. Next slide. Nine thirteen. So we go ahead, and we're going to hear about great devotees. Mahatmas, great souls, Maha Atma, Maha great and Atma soul. So Mahatmas, their activities are described. O Sanaprita, those who are not deluded, the great souls are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service. Because they know me as the supreme personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. This is text number thirteen. Hmm. So Lord Krishna is describing how he protects these great devotees. And we can see the top, the picture on the top left. There's a picture of Draupadi, and people are trying to rip off her sari, which is covering her body. But Krishna manifested himself in the form of an unlimited sari, and although they were taking her cloth off, there was always more cloth covering her body. So this is a very wonderful example of how Krishna takes care of his devotees. Draupadi is a very great devotee of Lord Krishna, and Lord Krishna wants to protect her chastity. So although Draupadi had five husbands, none of them could come to help her, but she remembered Krishna, and Krishna came in the form of sari, and he protected her. So 
ดสุดท้ายนางต้องร้องเรียกขอความช่วยเหลือจากกฤษณาและกฤษณาก็ช่วยนางในรูปแบบของสาลี And in the bottom picture, you can see a husband and wife with their child, and they're chanting Hare Krishna and doing devotional service, and everything is being provided. They're being taken care of. All the different demigods are bestowing their blessings on them. So, this is the power of the protection of Lord Krishna that He comes to protect His devotees. Uh, but of course, to get Krishna's protection, you have to be qualified. The qualification is that they're always engaged in His service. And they're fully, they, they know Krishna to be the original Supreme Lord. And he is inexhaustible, and they are fully engaged in his service. Go ahead. So next slide, nine twenty-two. Ananyas chintayanto mam yegyan paryupasate tesham nitya bayuktanam yoga kshema vahamiyaham. But those who always worship me with exclusive devotion, meditating on my transcendental form, to them I carry what they lack and I preserve what they have. แต่พวกที่บูชาข้าอยู่เสมอด้วยการเพชรตนเสียสละโดยเฉพาะสมโดยเฉพาะทำสมาธิอยู่ที่รูปลักษณ์ทิพของข้าคนเหล่านี้ข้าจะส่งส่วนที่เขาขาดให้และจะรักษาส่วนที่เขามีอยู่แล้ว So this is a very special relationship Krishna has with his pure devotees อันนี้เป็นความสัมพันธ์พิเศษนะที่ Krishna เนี่ยจะมีกับสาวกของท่าน Right? When Krishna sees that somebody is very devoted to him and worshiping him and meditating on him, then Krishna takes care of them. He. Krishna gives what we lack. We lack something. Krishna will provide it. And if you have something, Krishna will help you maintain it. So there's a nice story in this regard. There's a nice story about one Brahmana, and he he was reading this verse, and he thought. Oh, I don't think Krishna would personally come and do it. And he crossed out this word vahamiyaham because vahamiyaham means Krishna saying, "I do it." And instead, he made it yoga kshema karomi aham. Karomi means I will, uh, I, mean, I'll, I'll, I will, I will arrange for it to happen. I won't do it myself, but I'll get somebody to do it. And 
So then he went outside and he went out to do, he was a brahmana and he went out to do some begging to get some food for him and his wife. And when he went out, then two boys came to the house. So these two boys, one was blackish and one was a very white color and they were carrying a lot of food and they said to the brahmana's wife that we brought this food for you. So they brought the food in and then they said, now we want to go. We have to go quick. We don't want to meet your husband again. We're afraid of him. So his wife was surprised, the lady was surprised. He said, why are you afraid of my husband? He's a nice man. But they said, no, look, he beat us. And they showed their backs and there were big marks, big strokes where he'd be, somebody had beaten them on their back. So she was very shocked that she said, oh, I never knew my husband could be like this. He's usually a very gentle man. So anyway, the two boys left and after some time, her husband came home. And so she, he was surprised to see that his wife had a lot of food there and she he said, where did you get all the food from? So then she said, the, the two boys, the two boys you sent, the one black boy and the one white boy, they came and they brought all the food. So he was very surprised. He said, I never sent any boys with any food. But then he thought about it and then he remembered what he'd done, how he'd been reading the Bhagavad Gita and he was reading this verse from the ninth chapter, text number 22, and how he crossed out the word Vahami. And, and he, because he crossed out it, that was like beating Krishna's back. And that's how Krishna had the marks on his back. So Krishna personally came there to convince him, to show him the, that, that, that he's, he's going to take care of them, that he personally will come to take care. And you can see the pictures which we have shown here. This picture is about one great devotee, young boy named Prahlad, and how his life was in danger from so many things. There was a big elephant going to crush him, and then there were these 
nasty demons and snakes that wanted to kill him, but nobody could harm him. And finally, Lord Nishingadeva appeared and go back. Archana. Go back. Yes, yes. Sorry, Guru. Finally, Lord Nishingadeva appeared, and Lord Nishingadeva killed the person who was trying to harm his devotee Prahlad. So, Lord, Lord Nishingadeva, by appearing in this way, he showed how he's always there to protect and take care of his devotee. Krishna personally takes care of his devotees. Okay, go ahead. Okay, now 926. Another very nice verse, very well known verse. Patram pushpam palam toyam yome bhakti aprayachati tadaham bhakti uparatam ashnami prayatatmana. If one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, a fruit, or water, I will accept it. So, you can see Krishna is not a meat eater. We want, we want to offer to Krishna something. We can offer simple things, leaves, flowers, fruit, water, and even one leaf, one flower, one fruit, or a glass of water. You don't have to offer all things, you can just offer one of them. These things are usually available everywhere. We know in Thailand, everywhere you can get a leaf, a flower, or some fruit, a piece of fruit. So Krishna is not greedy, he is not hungry to get our offerings. Krishna has many Lakshmis, goddesses of fortune, who are all serving him. He doesn't need our offerings. But Krishna wants our love. And you can see the word bhakti is mentioned twice in the verse. So you may have a nice offering, but if you have no devotion, Krishna will not accept it. There's a pastime that one time the son of Dhritarashtra, Duryodhan, he had a big meal arranged for Lord Krishna and he invited Lord Krishna to come and take food. But Lord Krishna said, no, no, I'm not coming, I'm not hungry. So, 
Lord Krishna knows Duryodhana is not a devotee. He didn't want to accept his offering. But when Vidura invited Krishna to come, Krishna was eager to come. And Vidura was very poor. He only had a few bananas to offer to Krishna. But when Krishna came, he was so excited, he offered Krishna this banana skins and threw out the bananas. He got confused and he offered Krishna the banana skins, but Krishna still accepted. So Krishna eats, he's a person and he eats, but he will only eat where there is devotion. So it, the Acharyas also tell us that when we cook for Krishna and when we want to offer for Krishna, we must be clean and must be pure, otherwise Krishna will not accept. So you can see in this picture also, the lady came, she was selling fruits one day and she came to the door of Krishna's house and Krishna saw she's got some fruits. He came running and he just brought a few grains of rice in his hands to offer her. And the lady was so happy to see the young boy, little boy come. She gave him many fruits. She gave him big, you can see she's hand, handing many fruits. And Krishna only had a few pieces of rice, but she didn't care. And when these, these pieces of rice came into her basket, the rice all transformed into beautiful, valuable jewels and gems. So this shows when you offer something, when you give something with love to Krishna, you're never the loser. Okay, go ahead. Alright, so this is the final verse of the chapter and this verse is called, actually this is the most confidential knowledge. Manmana bhavamad bhakto madhyaji mam namaskaru mam me vaishasi yukvaivam atmanam mat parayanaha. Engage your mind always in thinking of me, become my devotee, offer obeisances to me and worship me. Being completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me. <laughs> So, this is the essence of the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna is telling us what we need to do to surrender to Him. 
ันนี้นะคะถือว่าเป็นสาระสําคัญของพระวัตถิตาพระวัตถุชาเนี่ยได้บอกวิธีการที่เราให้เราเนี่ยสินอลาต่อพระองค์ Later in the 18th chapter, this verse will be repeated at the end of the 18th chapter. So you can understand this is a very important verse and very important instruction. First of all, we have to. Think of Krishna. Use our mind to think of Krishna. And you can see the devotees sitting, chanting. That's the best way to think of Krishna by chanting his holy name. So we have to to be able to think of Krishna. We have to chant, and we have to also hear about Krishna. Then we can think of Krishna. If we haven't heard about Krishna, it will be very difficult to think of Krishna. And then become the devotee. Become Krishna's devotee. We shouldn't be devoted to anybody else. We should be devoted only to Krishna. Even we don't want to think of the forearm form of Vishnu. We just want to think of Krishna. And then we have to also offer obeisances to Krishna. Sometimes people don't like to bow down. They think, "Oh, I don't like to bow. I don't like this bowing down." But if you don't bow down to Krishna, you'll be forced to bow down to old age and to disease and to death. So it's better to bow down to Krishna. Who wants to bow down to old age, disease, and death? If we bow down to Krishna, then we can get free of old age, disease, and death. And then you have to also uh, worship Krishna. Here you can see Prabhupada in the picture in the bottom right corner. Prabhupada is offering arti to Krishna. So that's how we worship Krishna. Okay. All right. So and now we have. Uh, Questions? Anybody has a question here? Yes, Gurudev, we got three questions. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, Maharaj, I have a question uh, regarding. Uh, Krishna, you said that Krishna protects his devotees. Uh, I was thinking that um, the, does he protect uh, just pure devotees, or uh, does he also pro protect devotees who are uh, not fully surrendered? We understand that he he protects according to our surrender, but um, 
how do we understand that even as we are not yet pure devotees, how do we become hopeful or become convinced that Krishna will protect us? ในส่วนที่คริชนาบอกว่าคริชนาจะทรงให้ความปกป้องคุ้มครองกับสาวกเนี่ยอันนั้นหมายความว่าจะต้องเป็นสาวกในระดับไหนที่คริชนาจะท
There, there is different kinds of devotion. Devotion may be mixed with desire for material benefit, or it may be mixed with desire for knowledge, or desire for yoga power. But this most confidential knowledge shows how Krishna reciprocates with those who are Kevala Bhaktas, who are only fixed in devotion to Krishna, nobody else. Or sometimes Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita they use the word Ananya Bhakta. The Ananya Bhakta means without any deviation, completely devoted to Krishna. So, so that is pure de, that is pure devotion yes all right what's the other question Okay. Uh, uh, come, 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 come. Chaya Madhaji. Yes, Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna, Pranam. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Pimmi Khwam Song Sai, Raha, Nay Rawaki, Patapato Pensa Wome, Pimmi Gandai Put Kui Kap Sawo Sai U, Naha, Ben Sambadaya U, Nogo, Sanatan Sambadaya. คือมีมีความสงสัยว่าทุกสัมปทายะที่แม้กระทั่งวัยชนะวะเองเนี่ยมีฉบับเอ่อปรากฏคีตาเป็นของตัวเองทีนี้อยากจะถามคุณลุง
And usually these people who have their Bhagavad Gita, they're not coming in any di disciplic succession. They don't come through any parampara. So that's why Prabhupada wrote his own Bhagavad Gita. Be because other, everybody else's Bhagavad Gita is full of impersonalism and speculation. Uh -huh. Alright. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, next question, maybe Sarah Punima Mataji. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Bhagavan. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Sarah Punima. Um, my question is, Vidura, uh, Vidura is, Vidura, uh, Vidura, and Maha Montri called Sakapat Yai Marina, and Rasha Amazak Yai, Copen Maha Montrina. Now, Tar Montri, Thai Tipen Maha Montri, like a book of Japan, Jot Jai, book of Jalan Lui Makma, Yan Chen, neighbor to Ban Copen, but Maha Mi Kon. เป็นแบบแต่ลูกน้องของคนรวยมากเขาก็จะมีชีวิตที่สุขสบายมากๆใช่มั้ยเราก็เห็นได้ทั่วไปแต่ว่าวิดูร้าเนี่ยเป็น
So Dhritarashtra he did not accept. He thought, no, he's my son, he's a good boy, he's okay. And so then Duryodhan found out what happened and then he, he got Vidura and he, threw, threw, he told Vidura, get out from the palace, you cannot stay here anymore, you get out from here. So then Vidura was thrown out from the palace and he went to visit the holy places. And he, he went for many years to travel in the holy places and after the battle of Kurukshetra then only he came back. All the sons of Dhritarashtra were dead and he came back to preach to Dhritarashtra. And by the mercy of Vidura, Dhritarashtra could go out from the home and he could get some kind of elevation to, for his next life. So Vidura was not very much favored, he was not very popular when he was living in the palace, so he did not have much material facility. Because they knew he likes the Pandavas, he's friend with the Pandavas, and Pandavas they thought they're the enemy of our, of the Kuravas. So that's why, that's why Vidura only had a few bananas. Or maybe nobody had been to the market yet, they didn't have month boga and they were waiting for somebody to go to market and get more boga. But the point is, Krishna accepted, he saw the devotion of Vidura. That when you worship demigods, if you worship demigods like Shiva and Brahma and Durga and other gods, then it's an offering which is important. You have to make a very nice offering. But, but when you worship Krishna, Krishna wants the devotion. He's not worried so much what you offer, but there must be that devotion. Just like we said, you can offer one flower or one little piece of fruit, but if there's devotion, Krishna's hungry, he wants to eat it because he enjoys the devotion, he tastes the devotion. Just like when we get prasadam cooked by devotees, it has a special ingredient of love and devotion. If you go to a karmi restaurant 
or you eat in some non-devotee's house, there's no devotion there. So that's why prasadam is so popular and so famous. Everyone tastes the devotion. Even though the food may be very simple, it may just be some kitchari, but it's so nectar because it's cooked with devotion and it's offered with devotion. So devotion is a special ingredient which we want, which is there in prasadam. It's very powerful. And when we take prasadam, we don't just take it, we honor prasadam and it purifies the heart. Many people become devotees just by eating prasadam. And many people don't want to leave Krishna consciousness because they cannot give up prasadam. Okay, any other question? We got two more questions, Gurudev. Okay. Uh, one from maybe Nanda and, and, and yeah. ได้ยินมั้ยคะได้ยินค่ะอ่าพอดีว่ามิเชลมิเชลทราบว่าพระหรือว่าสัญญาสีหรือว่าพระคุณจารินจะจะอยู่ด้วยกันให้ทานแล
in that scripture is written somewhere that uh, actually monk life they live by uh, asking for charity so one time lord buddha he went for charity collection and then someone uh, give him meat offer him meat something like that and he accepted that so she was little doubting about it that uh, is something like that ever happen or is just they're just making it up or how, how should she understand well I'm not an expert in Buddhist scriptures. It's not really good for me to comment on this. Mm. But uh, we do know First of all, there are, there are different Buddhas, you see. There are different Buddhas. So one, the Buddha who is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam, he came to stop the killing of the animals. Because the people were killing animals in the name of the Vedas. They were said this is a Vedic ceremony. And on the basis of the Vedic ceremony, they were slaughtering many animals. So Lord Buddha came to lead the people away from this killing of animals. And he taught them compassion, to see, to be compassionate on all forms of life. Sometimes even the monks, they will look at a glass of water and they will think about the different forms of life which are there within the water. They will feel compassion on all different living entities. So Prabhupada said anyway, he said he would rather starve than eat animal flesh. There's a story that there's a story that there was a yogi in the desert and he was starving. So he there was a he he found a dog and he killed the dog and ate the dog. But Prabhupada said he would never do that. He said I would rather starve than kill the dog and eat the dog. So I don't know about the Buddha. I have heard that story before. I've heard it, that the Buddha had meat, that he was given meat, and the Buddhists have a rule that what people, are, what people give you, you're supposed to eat. 
But I see many Buddhists begging in the market and I know they don't eat everything they're given. And often what they don't eat, they give to dogs. They have dogs live there near the Buddha's temple and whatever they don't eat, they just give to the dogs. So, whatever people give you, you're supposed to accept. But it doesn't mean you're supposed you have to eat it. People may give you meat. It doesn't mean you have to eat it. So there are many stories about these different Bud about Buddha. I don't know what's the real story, what's not, I don't know. She said that this was in a Buddhist scripture. Yes. Oh. Okay. She read it on internet. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other question? Yeah. Well, we got two more, but I think we only take one. Or how to do? It's the time now. Two more. Come on. What what's the question? Okay, Paraji bonus. Hari Krishna Maharaj Pranam. So I'll speak in Nepali, sorry. Uh, Mataji, uh, you uh we just uh video question she gives you a fast question which will be an instant and the mummy agent of Pasha passed the one nine point twenty six on the sad, you but one lay Bakter Dija Hancha Te Dinja other turns up in Jan the Brahma. And I'll get the Brahma lay for the two you got to Bahamim like question is um, like uh, we, uh, you, you mentioned the story of how the Brahman is. Brahmana, he cuts the letters um, that Krishna wrote. So sometimes as devotees, we also underline or we highlight some words in Bhagavad Gita. So will that also, um, how does that affect or how can we also do that? Well, nowadays we do have electronic copies and you can do things like that on electronic copies without any harm. But what happened, what the Brahmana did, this Brahmana name, his name was Arjunacharya, he he crossed out, he actually crossed out the word Vahami and he wrote in another word. So usually we don't cross out any word, we may underline a word, but we don't cross it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the other question? 
Chaitanya Maharaj, according to the Patra Pustam Halam Toyam, the Sloka, I used to look much a Kennedy Bakterle, Jo Bhaw Shardale, Bakti Bhawale, one at your own sir, but one like you are preleading in sir. Yadi Kikram, I would think in Saki, a Pemangima, a Bakta, you Bakta in a man like a Sino, and a black for Chordino. You grant the Kinsa, like a Karan Bosma, the Mundimapani, Kantimana like a Bakaru, a Pekomunson. Rati Bhakta Siva Garda Hari, Tio Pakai Kunchi Shri Bhagana Chadao Nam Munsa Ki Bhunna Bhani Bhakta Pari, Jankar. Uh, Ayushna Maharaj, his, uh, one more question is, uh, we understand that Krishna accept anything that is offered with devotion, but sometimes in the temples uh, there is some restrictions that only devotees who are pure or who have, um, let's say, worn a, some, worn a neck bead, they are allowed to offer. So, will Krishna accept that, or um, how, how do we understand this? Well, yeah, there, there, there has to be there has to be some standards in offering to Krishna. Generally, the offerings are made by the brahmanas, those who are twice initiated, who strictly follow rules and regulations. <laughs> อ่าถวายด้วยความรักและเราก็จะส่งเสริมให้สาวกพี่อุปสมบทแล้วหรือว่าเป็นบราหมณะเนี่ยทําถวายทั้งนั้นนะถ้าเกิดใครยังไม่
उत्तम सेवा हो हमी घर बसर आप राउंड बढ़ाई अब अर सेवा नपाऊि आपने माला फिर जब्त कर तृप्त भे जो या फिर तो आनंद फील हम कर सकते हैं तर अर सेवा जो अब मंगल आरती होते हैं तुलसी आरती गौर आरती ये अटेन्जन हम नगर पाए थुप्रे भो ते भर को हो कि या फिर हम जब राम नगर ब्रह्म मुहूर्त में उठे दुई दुई बजे देखि बड़ा ज छ बजेसम है छोरा माला दुई पाली जब कर सकें तो थर्टी टू राउंड जब कर हमीर अलग तृप्त भो जो फील होते हैं तो चाहिए कें भाई हरे कृष्ण महाराज माता जी क्वेश्चन इज राइट नाउ uh you you mentioned that the most uh, best form of devotional service is chanting hari krishna ma mantra but right now since we are in a kind of lockdown we are not able to go to the temple and we chant in our own houses we try to chant our best but still we are not satisfied so um, how, how can we uh, do practice and become satisfied like we used to do when we are we are in temple like we to mangalarti even when we are doing it from our homes right now when we are under lockdown is our question well you can chant you can play recordings of kirtan and you can chant along with the recordings of kirtan we have a many videos there's a lot of video recordings you can join in with the kirtan ตอนนี้เนี่ยพยายามสวดมนต์อยู่บ้านเนื่องจากล็อกดาวน์ไม่สามารถไปร่วมกิจกรรมที่วัดได้และหลังจากที่มาดีสวดมนต์เนี่